in the repair shop today, Dom reaches for the biscuit tin. You all right? With your biscuits, yeah. 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 <laughs> As he and England's last master, Cooper, repair a pint-sized whiskey barrel. What, you think of me biscuit tin hoops yeah, now? Okay. Hey, hey. I'll take it all back. While a heritage craft dating back thousands of years is put to use, repairing a beloved family heirloom. Put your upright behind two, and then you take a weaver in front of four. Lay one down, and bend the two back. First to arrive, 93-year-old retired army officer Thomas Hassel and his daughter Jane. They're hoping silversmith Brendan West can put the shine back into a precious military memento. How are we doing, sir? Hello. I'm Jay. Hello. Tom. All right, Tom. Tom. Hi, Tom. I'm Brendan. Hello. Hello. Hello, Jay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you both. So, what have you brought us in? I brought this stick, uh, swagger stick. And the problem is, it's got a lot Ooh. of tension in it. Right. All right. Okay. if it's possible to get them out. OK. I've never seen one of these before. Can you tell us a bit of history about that? I called up in uh, 1943, November, boarded this ship. Uh, we were underwater on the evening before D-Day, and I landed on Juno Beach. Then we, we uh, moved off to Berlin, because by now the hostilities had ceased. Yeah. They come to commander, inspected us, and the, the smartest person on guard duty yeah. had to go to the commanding officer's uh, office, and he presented us with a silver stick to do that with. At lunchtime, he'd say, yeah, go yeah. to Berlin and have the afternoon off. Right. Nice. <laughs> so it was worth winning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Four times I, I did that, and four times I got the silver stick. So you've won this stick for looking smart. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, you do look quite dapper there. Oh, and you've got medals. Oh. This one is because I landed on D-Day. Wow. This is a French Legion armor. It's equivalent to our Victoria Cross. Wow. Victoria Cross, yeah. That's uh, an amazing medal, absolutely amazing achievement. It is. So the swagger stick that you got four times, you had to give that back, did you? So Unfortunately, did you, so I had to you, give that back. How did you end up with <laughs> this and, and one? And then uh, my company commander, for those efforts, said, I'm going to present you with this. OK, OK. Keepsake stick. OK. okay. Why is it called a swagger stick, then? Well, as you, you know... Because you've you, you got a bit of swagger to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swagger yeah. about with it. OK. Yeah. <laughs> so this is quite important to you, then? Very important. Okay. And brings back a lot of memories. OK. So how do you feel about the swagger oh, stick? I love it. We used to play with it as children. Oh, did you? Yeah. That's yeah. how the dance came. Yes, yeah. that's how the dance came. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what have you got there? We've got a new badge. That's a brass okay. badge. It says Egypt on it. It's the only regiment in the British Army that has two badges. So you want this badge on the end of there, then? Yes, the present one is damaged, as you'll okay. see. Yes. OK. Well, um, leave this with me. Is it difficult? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we're going to be able to do something. Yeah, of course. But thank you for bringing it in. Thank you ever thank so you, much. Sir. Okay. Thank you. It's really nice to thank meet you. you. And I'll do my best for you. Appreciate it. OK. You. you take care now. Cheerio. Yeah. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Very smart. Very smart. I'm feeling a bit sad because I'm leaving the stick behind, but hopefully it'll be repaired. I think uh, the stick is so important from the memories it's going to give to us and it will get passed down in generations. It will never leave our family. Thomas's um, beautiful swagger stick had a bit of a bashing, a bit of a hard time in its, in its life. Um, now, to get these dents out, I have to get inside the ball to knock them outwards. So I've got to get the ball off the stick. The first thing I'm going to do is to try and get the pins out um, and see if the ball will pull off. There's nothing to get hold of on the other one, so I'm going to try and knock that one in. Let's knock that into the wood. Um, so we're now 
free of tax, stopping me, and see if this pulls off or not. Yeah, just as I suspected, it's really, really tight. So that's been on there 70 years or so. What I don't want to do is break the top off the stick. Here we go, here it goes. Lumps of glue everywhere, they're all flying out. It's just about to come off now. There we go. Brandon's tactical manoeuvres on the swagger stick are off to a strong start. But outside, another visitor is in need of help. Deirdre Beaton from Perth is hoping Dom can restore a family heirloom imbued with fond memories. Hi, I'm Dom. I'm Deirdre. Thank Lovely you. Lovely to see you. You OK? So, what have you brought along? Well, this is a wee barrel for dispensing drams of whisky. Oh, it's tiny. Um, oh, the family story is that it was made from wood from a ship wrecked off the east coast of Scotland called HMS Fox and that our ancestor was the captain of that ship. It was just been, has just been passed down. It holds one bottle of whisky exactly. OK. And my father was terribly proud of that. And the idea was that you put your whisky in the top and then dispense oh, it's it got a little, little tap. tap. Oh, it's, uh -huh. oh, brilliant. <laughs> so how on earth did you come to uh, acquire something like this? Where's well, it, can you tell me a bit about it? It came from it... my father, who inherited it from his father, my granddad. So it's been been used in the family, they oh, actually yes. used it. I remember seeing it in my grandparents' house. So it would have still been in use then, I guess. Oh yes, so my grandfather would still use it. I can remember it sitting on a huge sideboard that had cupboards on either side and a space in the middle where we children could hide. So he obviously, and, he obviously um, loved it. Oh yes, he did. He was very proud of it and yeah. he did like to use it. I've got to ask though, I mean it doesn't look very watertight now. No, How no. Do you know what happened to it? Yes, it's all my fault. Oh I, no. I decided to take the metal bands off to clean them because I had got polish in the wood and I thought well this time I'll take that and then of course it oh, fell to bits. So I kind well, of expunged the memory because it's so terrible but I think when I couldn't get the bands back on I thought well if I take the staves and try and push them into the bands and the whole thing collapsed so I'm not even sure that all the staves are in the right order. It's a complete wreck. Yes. Oh. But uh, I still do display it because I, I am proud of it. It's story. Even though I'm not proud of the seat that it's in. The memories are still there with it. Absolutely, yes. Still... Yes. It seems to be missing a piece. Do you know well, anything about that? Is it, oh, is it in there? There is a, yes. The other rings are there and the oh, end wow, piece there's more. is there. It would just be lovely to have it looking nice. And the way it was when my father took such care of it yeah, sure. before I got my hands on it. Well, thank you so much for bringing it in. I'm kind of anxious, but looking forward <laughs> to getting started on it. So. Well, there's no way it could be any worse than it is at the it moment. It can't get much worse. No, you're <laughs> no. right. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Well, thank well, you. Thank you Lovely very to much. meet you. I feel very sad that it's in such a bad state. It reminds me strongly of my father, my grandparents, and a way of life that's gone. It would be unbelievable to be able to bring it back to life and bring it back into use again. And I think I'd throw a wee party to celebrate. First impressions, kind of terrifying. It's, <laughs> I, I'm actually literally scared to touch it. I think if I took this hoop off, it would just fall to pieces. Um, the good news, it looks like all of this strips are called staves. They're all there. On the whole, I'm just relieved that all the pieces are here. Straightening out the metal hoops, fixing the tap, all the bits like that, cleaning up the wood is absolutely no problem. I can manage all of that. But getting this thing to be even remotely watertight again is beyond me. That's a real specialist job. On his mission to repair the swagger stick, Brenton is preparing to separate the ball from the metal tube that connects it to the staff. I'm hoping that this tube has been soft-soldered onto the ball and I could just heat it up and it'll, it'll fall off. If it's silver-soldered on rather than soft-soldered, heating it up won't work. I'm pulling quite hard on here and this is not coming off, so I fear this is silver-soldered on. The delicate silver sphere is made of two halves soldered together. If Brenton overheats the metal, the danger is the two halves of the ball could fall apart. I have to be really careful. I know how precious this is, and I want to keep it intact if I can. So I'll saw the tube off, and we can get to get to work trying to knock some of these dents out. 
The broken brass badge needs to be removed from the top, but that too is proving to be a challenge. Part of this badge came off really easily, um, and this other bit seems to be being a bit awkward, so I'm going to heat that up and see if it'll come off now. Good grief, what is that held on with? That's ridiculous. That's not coming off there, is it? OK, plan B. I think I'll probably file that off of there when it's cooled down. But first, there's the task of hammering out all the dents on the delicate metal ball. So this is quite important to Thomas that these dents are removed from here. So basically, um, the ball has taken a shock to the outside with some sharp object, or bump like that, and I'm just going inside and bumping it back out again. I wish I could climb inside the ball and just get in there and bash them out. It'd be a lot easier than having to do them. It's sort of blind because I can't look in there at the same time, so I've just got to have a little hit and see if, see if I've uh, done a good job or not. Once Brenton has finished hammering out the dents from the inside, he needs to tap down the protrusions formed on the outside. To provide a solid supporting surface, he fills the ball with melted pine resin, known as pitch. OK, so I've got to let that cool down now. Um, once that's cooled down, that pitch will be absolutely solid in there, hard as anything. The pitch inside is nice and firm now. I'm just basically just tapping away and uh, it's slowly becoming smoother and smoother. ball is now dent free, um, it's filed and ready for polishing, so all I've got to do is solder this on here, polish it, put the badge back on, put it on the stick. Next, retired midwife Jane Pepys and her husband Richard have travelled from Southampton, bringing an heirloom that played a part in raising three generations of their family. Dom is with expert willow weaver, Sarah Hatton. Hi, I'm Dom. This is Hello, lovely I'm Sarah. Sarah. Hello. Hi. These are my baby weighing scales. Wow. OK. These were obviously were meant to go all the way round and to lie the baby in there quite safely and Brilliant. put the weights on to see how like heavy your baby is. Almost like you'd have in your kitchen. Yes, yes. Similar similar bigger. Of, yeah. Exactly. Bigger. Yeah. It's not terribly safe. No. Yeah. I don't think you'd want to put a baby in now, would you? No. Not, not really. <laughs> How long has this been in your family? Well, probably near on a hundred years, because wow. yeah. my mother uh, would, was, would have been 90 this year. I was bought for her. For her. Yeah. When she was um, a baby? When she was a baby. Wow. And she's the eldest of four girls. Wow. Then I think it was given to my <laughs> next aunt, Marion. She was the one who passed it on to me. Yeah. Then, when I was expecting my first, our son Oliver, and then our two daughters wow. were waiting. Yeah, all your whole family just, uh, yeah. just in here. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's quite fun to think back of my mother and my aunts as, as little babies being put in there. And when you look at it now, what memories does this bring back for you? I suppose the joy of having my own children and, and seeing them growing and knowing that they're growing well and they're healthy. I particularly remember my son being 
plonked in here. <laughs> and that's why the sides are so yeah. important. <laughs> and what's left of it is absolutely beautiful. It's amazingly well made. The border especially is very neat. It's made with buff willow, which has been stripped of its bark. They used to use buff willow on mass-made um, products um, because it's much quicker to soak because the bark has been stripped off. But it does mean that it can get a little bit more brittle. So it looks like a lot of work. Too. It does. It's a bit scary. <laughs> uh, there's quite a lot of it missing. We now have one grandchild and another on the way. Got more baby weighing to do. More baby weighing, <laughs> but I'd like them prepared so my daughters don't look at them with horror and think, I'm not putting yeah. my baby in there. No. It's part of my family history, and I think it would be lovely to see it carried on and being used. Well, thank you very much for bringing them in. And it's uh, over to you, yes, I'm afraid. Yeah. Thank you. Well, <laughs> lovely to meet you. Well, thank, thank, you thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you later. I'm quite excited about leaving the baby scales behind and seeing how they'll turn out, but also obviously a bit apprehensive at parting with them. It takes me back to my children being babies and all the joy that that brought me. So, OK. Yeah. The mechanics, this bit, the scales part, is yeah. fine. I kind of get my head around that. That looks yeah. OK. Yeah. Maybe you could do with a clean. Yes. But yeah. other than that, it's, it looks like it's all there. Yeah. And OK, yeah. this terrifies yeah. me. <laughs> I'm even scared to hold it. Look, the more I'm holding oh, it, it's God, just I know, crumbling apart. Oh, God, I know, bits are falling off. Yeah. Um, What's your plan? Do you have a plan of attack already? I do or? have a plan of attack. I would like to keep as much of this beautiful weaving that's there already as possible. OK, so this will come all the way round? Yes, absolutely. But it is just these parts where you join into the existing basket, which will be the problem. So that's making you nervous, is yes, it? Yes, very nervous. But if I soak it, hopefully it will make it more pliable. But it's 100 years old. Yeah. Um, so, and yes. brittle as anything, isn't yes, it? Yes, so. absolutely. Cool. Well, there's Super. plenty of work. I'll let you take yeah, that. I'll I don't want to that. touch that anymore. No. <laughs> so the three main things I have to do with this is to add the side stakes around the bottom where they're all missing. I need to join on top of the weaving, but in a nice undulating um, way, and then to finish the border off. But first of all, I have to soak the basket in water. When you soak it in water, it makes it more flexible. Um, and that will help me when I join the old to the new. Outside, Dom is also devising a plan of attack. He needs to get the broken whiskey barrel back together and watertight again. So he's called in help from England's last master cooper, Alistair Sims. Hello, Hello Dom. Hey. Lovely you? to see you. Lovely. Nice to see you again. Yeah. Heard you got a problem. Yeah. Look, this I'm literally I'm so terrified to touch it. I think it, it's about to fall apart. After my training last time, you can't fix that. No. <laughs> So basically, I would love to be able to get it watertight again. Deirdre's never seen it working, so it's been dry for a long time. What do you think? Just on closer inspection, mm. we look at where it is. All the hoops, marks down there. Yeah, we've got the hoops. Yeah, right. no, there's been four on each end. And you haven't got, you haven't got, got eight got... hoops. So well, I mean. real... Yeah, OK, I didn't realise One, that. Two, three, four. Oh, no. I think we're going to have to get a biscuit tin, a proper tin one. Oh, well, for the metal? Yeah, and you're going to have to cut some hoops. To match him. Okay, I can. Yeah, I could do that. I could do that. Anything in particular? Yeah, some nice chalky ones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No worries. And I'll stop here and do this. Good luck. Right, see you later. The techniques Alistair uses have barely changed since Roman times. This is the most important part. Pick the staves up, look at the patina, and try to match them together. Like that, and sometimes they might have been put back the wrong way around, so you've got to try everywhere. See, that's that's an instant match. And we'll put them on one side. I won't like to think how many times I've done this in my life. This is a bit where you need patience. Alistair, I'm back with your biscuits. 
look at that, you've been eating no, them as well. No, don't start. Look at the colour, though. The inside is really close. It is. To that silver. See, I told you. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I doubted you. <laughs> <laughs> well done. And some more I mean, good news. So, you've, so we literally had to just go through and match. Match. The colour. Everything up and move a few pieces about. Oh, and my. That's why we've wiped all the numbers off it now. Next step is we're going to take this and you're mm. going to hold it and I'm going to stand all these pieces of wood up in it. In the right order? Yeah. OK. So this one, the one with the bung in, goes where the rivets go, like yeah, that. Yeah, that makes sense. There, we just basically put the staves under, look. This is the same as if you were doing a big cask. So you treat this, even though it's miniature, you're treating it exactly the same way? Oh, yeah. Right, let go now. Sure? Yeah. Completely? Completely, I've got it. Right, you, the biggest two. Yep. Drop that Rivets over the up. top. Yeah. Just Why push you trusting it all me? the way down. Oh. Already, that looks so much better. What we'll do is we'll tighten all the hoops up by pushing them and in. pushing it down. And yeah. See, and we look for all these joints coming right and the shape coming right. I see. We can't do that till we get everything tight. So we sort of have to build it. Yeah. Complete, almost completely, completely to make sure it's to okay. To make sure it's okay. Okay, so we may be doing this a few times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do we need? Three more. Three more. Three more hoops. hoops. Yeah. Okay. We'll cut those out of the biscuit tin. Yeah. Let's do it. You seem very confident with this. Is this something you've done before? Not me personally, but uh, I remember when I was an apprentice going round to uh, an old Cooper's house in Burton on Trent with my old boss. Yeah. And he was cutting biscuit tins up to make hoops for his uh, for something similar, little cast, yeah, similar size, yeah, really? and smaller, yeah. And apparently it was what the old Coopers used to do. So this isn't that strange. No. No. Okay. <laughs> You're doing the same thing now that uh, the gentleman that made it did, except he was probably sat in front of his fire at home with a nice glass of whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, with your biscuits, yeah. 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 <laughs> How about you file that for us? Do you mind? I, I was enjoying myself and I'll cut the you next... eat the biscuits. <laughs> You're thinking we biscuit tin hoops yeah, now. Okay. <laughs> hey. uh, take it all back. It's worked, it has worked really well. Well done. Very good. I shouldn't have doubted you, should I? No. <laughs> now the metal hoops are on, the next challenge is to tackle the wood centuries old. Here you go, Alistair, I've got your hot water. What's going on here? Well, you didn't bring me a funnel, so I've got to pour freehand. What are you putting in there? Sugar? Salt. What's that for? What's that for? That's uh, just to sweeten the cask up. Sweeten it? You can sweeten the cask up with salt? Yeah. What, what the salt does, it opens the surface parts of the timber and pulls all the nasties out so it makes, makes the timber sweet again. This will be the test of how, yeah. many, holes, how many leaks yeah. it's got, no? Exactly. Are you nervous? Sort of. Straight away, look. Oh, it's coming out. Oh, look. <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. I think we need to soak it in a bucket. Soaking the barrel in water will rehydrate the timber, making it swell, theoretically sealing any gaps. So we'll leave that for, what, overnight? Overnight. And we'll test it again in the morning? Yeah, test it again in the morning. Brilliant. It's been a challenging repair, but now on the home straight, Brenton is buffing up the D-Day veteran swagger stick in readiness for its crowning glory, the new bronze badge. I've just polished the top of the stick and I'm now going to put the badge onto it. Let that set. OK, now I'm going to glue the stick onto here. So this is the stick about to go into the um, 
top for the very last time. Push that up tight. Back to reclaim the symbol of excellence, one of many gained during a glittering military career, 93-year-old Thomas Hassel and his daughter Jane. Well, it brings a lot of memories back to me. Memories of being in the forces in, in Germany. It was a great honor to receive it, and I'm hoping it can, it can return it to pristine condition. We are really looking forward to actually seeing it again, because it means really so much to us as a family. Hi. How are you, Tom? Hi. You all right? Hi, Tom. Hi. Have a, have a stool. There we go. Well, we might as well put you out of your misery, I think. There we go. Wow. <clears throat> well. Excuse me. It's OK. It's all right. Can I ask what you Of course you can. It's yours. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. Oh, that's amazing. Oh. I can't believe it. <laughs> what, a, what a super job you've made of that. I know what it means to you, so it's, it's been a pleasure doing it. I don't know, I don't know how you, you can get into the tents. There's ways. It's, it's a secret. There's ways. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> something to treasure. It is something to treasure, I definitely. I said this morning I was going to be passed down to my daughter. You're passing it down? Not now. She's not owning it now. She might, <laughs> she now. might put some more dents in it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so how does it make you feel then, Tom, having it back in that? That's Thank it. you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've got to stand up, though. You've got to stand yeah. up holding it, haven't you? That's better. Like that. Yes, sir. I'm absolutely Condition. proud. Proud as punch with it now. Yeah. Like the day you got it. Yes. Yes. And I want to thank you all for what you've done for me. Yeah. That's what we do, and we enjoy doing it. So it's a lovely pleasure to have. But uh, what pleasure you've given me. Tom, it's been a pleasure. Thank and you for pleasure, being here. That pleasure's been mine, I can assure you. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you yeah. so, much. so much. I've enjoyed doing it. Thank I'm you. glad you're pleased. <laughs> That's it. That's what I like to say. Thank you. All right, sir. Thank you. Take care now. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh. It took me back to Spando Barracks in, in, in Berlin, mm. where it was presented to me. So I feel as if I... I'm back to normal again, and I feel like swaggering with it. And we will treasure it in our family forever. I can tell you, I shall enjoy it for the rest of my life. It's wonderful. In the outdoor workshop, it's time to see if the overnight soaking has done the trick on the 18th century whiskey barrel. High hopes. <laughs> you look a bit Fingers nervous. Crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Oh. So, oh, look. See, look, the head's walked straight away. But the rest of it, if you hold it, tip it down that way, yeah. it was all coming out yeah. of here before, out of everywhere. So, yeah, yeah all of these are really yeah. good. Yeah, well, Do you think you'll be able to just knock that back in? Hopefully. Then we can get it. Oh. Broke it. And it's broke, look, so we're going to have to make a new one. The timber's oh, no. Dirt. It's just knackered, isn't it? It's just it's rotten, just, yeah, almost. It's rotten. OK, so there's me thinking we'll pull it out of the bucket of water and fill it straight up with whiskey. Yeah. Me too, as well. <laughs> <laughs> Dom cuts a new head. So you know, he's turned into a bigger job. Than we both thought, I think. Yeah. Do you not think we're having to remake the set? Yeah. yeah. But it'll be worth it, though. I think it would mean so much to Deirdre. I just hope she, she has a glass of whiskey out of it every night and thinks about all the hard work me and you <laughs> put into it. <laughs> I get me uh, spoke shave now so we can shape them. To get the shape on the, on the edge. Yeah, on the edge. 
Yeah, brilliant. I can't believe it's coming apart again. Put that in and line the centre of that oval. So are we going to have to soak this again? Yeah, we need it. Just get a full of hot water and we'll fill it on the stand. Because hopefully it will hold the water now. Hopefully. How's it looking? I think it's looking good. I mean, it's come a very long way, it hasn't has, it? It has come a very long way. That first way. time we filled it up and it was just... Yeah. Well done. I'm absolutely blown away. I can't believe you've managed to make it watertight. Brilliant. I told you we would. You told me. <laughs> you were as nervous as me. I was. Yeah. But yeah, that's good, isn't it? Thank you for your help. No, it's great. Back inside the barn, basketry expert Sarah is working on the baby scales that weighed three generations of one family. Hello, sir. Hello. I've got your oh, son. Thank you. Willow. Yes. Is that all right? Yes, it's dried though, so I wouldn't use this because you can see when I when I bend this, it actually yeah, that's snaps. It. Is yes. that why that's wet now? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so I soaked that okay. um, earlier. Right. Um, and I've already cut them. Um, into the scallums that I need. Right, what so is you that? can What's see that I've scooped the, the scallum out so it's a long cut which goes along the bottom of the willow rods. OK. And that's to uh, attach it. So this is now the side stake. Um, so one of these stakes along the side of the basket. Right. And this is how you attach the side to the base of the basket. So yeah. how long yes. have you been doing this, though? Because that doesn't seem easy. I've been doing it for 10 years, but um, repairs like this are quite difficult. How yeah. did you get started then? Um, well, I was actually working in IT. I went to um, the RHS show in Cardiff and right. I made a flower. You made a flower? I made a flower from Willow. Right. And that was, and it. That was it, you got the yeah. bug. Yeah. What happened then? I then um, booked myself on eight courses yes. and I bought three and a half acres of pasture with my dad and I planted 2,000 Willow cuttings. Well, you really got the bug, didn't oh, you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, big time. <laughs> so, yeah, I absolutely love it. So I can now start adding some of the side stakes. Just snip that off so it's nice and flush because I'm going to have to add the new piece into it. So you make a space through the weaving and then push the scallum through. I'm just going to bend this very carefully around, thread it through behind the side stake so that it ties that in really nicely and then up onto the weaving ready to join my next scallum. So um, I'm carefully selecting um, my willow rods because none None of the willows are the same. They're all different thicknesses. So you use the different thicknesses of the rods in different parts of the basket. So for example, the bottom part of the basket uses thicker rods. I want it to be as neat as possible. I'm just doing the row of weaving now, which is called fitching which actually holds it in position. And this is the kind of last opportunity, really, to get it in the, in the right shape. And I'm having it in a nice curve, so it's lowering down at the bottom. And then I'm going to have these coming up nice and straight, um, just to keep the baby in the scales. So in the 1920s, it was really common for willow to be used for all kinds of containers. I would say probably every household had a willow basket, but the introduction of plastics really changed everything. Um, and willow baskets in the 70s um, lost their popularity, which I think is a real, real pity because it's such a sustainable material, which is obviously completely different to plastics. So I can turn these uprights down um, to make the border which goes around the entire part of the basket. So you actually put your upright behind two and then you take a weaver in front of four and then you lay one down next to your rod like that and then bend the two back. Um, but that makes a really nice compact border.
Sarah's basket may be beginning to take shape. But in the outdoor workshop, Dom is putting the finishing touches to the miniature whiskey barrel. So the original tap on Deirdre's cask here, unfortunately, was broken. So I've managed to actually find a replacement, which is as close as I can. It's an old piece as well, sort of similar sort of age as the original. Um, and it would have, would have come off of a similar sized cask. So I think it's quite a fitting replacement. Just give it the final wipe over with some linseed oil now. This doesn't actually seal the wood. It treats it to stop it drying out and makes it a bit more waterproof. Really happy with how it looks now. It looks a lot different. It's ready for Deirdre to take away and fill with her whiskey. Deirdre has not seen her family's whiskey barrel in one piece for over 20 years. I'm really hoping that Dom's been able to put my barrel together again. I don't really expect it to be in working order. That would just be too much to ask for. Hello, Lovely to see you good again. Good to see you again. You OK? I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, very good, good thank you. Very good. So, so, can you explain to me, firstly, how you remember what you brought into us? Well, I remember it was my little whiskey barrel. The whole thing just looked so sad, and I, I really felt a bit guilty about having made such a mess of it. Oh. Did you have an awful struggle with it? It was a lot of work, yeah. I'm sure it was. But I won't hold you in suspense any longer. You ready? Gosh, yes. Oh, my goodness! Oh, my goodness. Oh, I didn't expect all these rings to be back on it. Oh. And you put a new tap on? Yeah. Oh, Dom. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Oh, that is just, oh. That is just absolutely beautiful. Oh, my goodness. I really did not expect it to look as good as that. Oh, hang on. Does, Got another little does surprise it, for you. Doesn't do work, the does it? Go on. Gosh. Oh, Tom, that is, oh, that is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, How does it smell? Whiskey. Yeah, it's whiskey. <laughs> well, slanchevar. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Tastes good. That's the best whiskey I've ever had. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Tom. You must. Come for a drink. Okay. Bye, then. Thanks so much. Oh, gosh, I'm feeling so happy and delighted and overwhelmed, really. It's so much better than I had even hoped for. It's absolutely amazing that he's got it to function. I really did not expect that. As my father was tremendously proud of it, he'd be so pleased and he would be dispensing drams all over the place out of it, I'm sure. <laughs> Also working to preserve a family heirloom, Sarah is approaching the crucial moment where she attaches the new woven section to the 100-year-old border on the baby scales basket. I'm just about to get to the end of the border, so I started over this side. We've come all the way round, um, so it's a bit of a nerve-wracking moment because it's quite brittle. I don't want to break it. So these ones here are the ones that I've soaked. Um, and I've made damp again, um, and this one is actually the new one. So I'm just going to hold my breath while I thread those in again. It's a very tight gap. That's gone in really well, actually, that one. So, and that's the beauty of of basketry is that it's not always easy, but practice makes perfect. Oh. So I'll be sleeping quite well tonight, knowing that Jane and Richard's grandchildren will be weighed safely in this basket. When the baby scales arrived at the repair shop, sections of the basket were missing, 
meaning they were not fit for purpose. Now Sarah has woven her magic. Jane and Richard have come to collect them. The baby scales have been in my family for about 90 years. They were bought to weigh my mother. We have a grandchild on the way, and I would like to be able to use them again. I'm looking forward to this. Gosh. How are we doing? Hello. Very well. Very well. You all right? very well. I heard Bye. you say as you was walking through the door, you're looking forward to this. Yes. Yeah. Very much. Yeah, very. I can't imagine what you've done to it. I can only picture them as they were. Okay. Yeah. Sad and dilapidated. Oh. <laughs> so, you want to see how she's done? <laughs> we, we do. do. <laughs> <laughs> she's dying to know. Okay. Should we let them see? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh. Gosh, that look at that. Is fantastic. That is a Look proper basket. That. You've done oh. a wonderful job. <laughs> Thank you so much. Isn't that beautiful? With that proper, yes. little, yeah. proper little bottom yeah. bit. You've done all the side struts. You can hardly see the joy. Where is the joy? Yeah. <laughs> no, you have She's good. <laughs> and yet they haven't lost their, their sort of look that they are old. We try to keep as much of the old basket as possible because yes. obviously that's your, your heritage yeah, and your history. So, oh, so well hopefully done. our daughter will have well no objection to putting her no. baby in there. I think they will be used and loved. Right. Oh, brilliant. So we'll give you a hand. Right. Brilliant. Right. I'm really happy to be reunited with my baby scales. The workmanship is so good. It's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, it's yes. just wonderful. Huge. And it's lovely to have something in the family that's gone through the generations. I think my grandmother would be very pleased to think that they are still in use and that we've treasured them, had them restored, and that they will go on to be used in the family in the future.